Welcome to Fubble Games. Today we are doing a review for Star Trek Discovery Season 3, Episode 3. I'm enraged. <laughs> I have never been treated by writers as bad as this. That I'm an idiot. And that's how I'm treated by these writers. That as a pretty much lifelong Star Trek fan, I don't know shit. I enjoyed my favorite show's DS9. I enjoyed Enterprise after they got past like season one and a half. Um, because the temporal code war never made much sense and it, the writers didn't seem to know what to do with it. Um, I enjoyed parts of Voyager until it became uh, UPN uh, guest star of the week, but that's not here nor there. So, <laughs> just laying down the basics. Um, yeah, the writers treat uh, the fandom as a complete bunch of idiots, and it's unfortunate. And I probably am not 100% up on the fandom because I'm probably more on some other fandoms and uh, the lore. Um, and there's lore channels out there that you could probably find more information on. But, so this episode breaks open. You're seeing Burnham and Book, who I don't care if they get together or not. It, 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 don't drag this out. Just bone or not bone. I don't care about these two characters, honestly. They get the call that the Discovery has appeared somewhere in the same sector that they are. I will get into that more later in this review. But uh, the anger I have right now, <laughs> trying to keep it under control. You basically are then told, um, so they... Basically replay the last two minutes of last week's episode, which I thought was a decent episode. Not a great episode or a good episode, but an average good episode. I said good, but higher end of average on my scoreboard. Um, and the reason was Burnham wasn't there for 90% of it. And unfortunately, they did the one stupid thing is they had Burnham save the freaking day at the end of the episode. Ugh. Which... Unfortunately, has happened in 99 out of 99% of the episodes, except for one where they actually made fun of her because she didn't come up with the answer. Um, but that's not here nor there. They have the reunion. Her and Saru start talking, and they're, they're like, oh, who's going to be captain? Saru's like, who's going to be captain? And then Burnham's like, uh, no, you're, you're captain. Okay. So they convince everybody, okay, we're going to home. we're going home. We're going to Earth. Because we got a message from 12 years ago that the uh, Starfleet Admiral wanted to meet people. They go to Earth. So they get to Earth, and suddenly Earth raises a deflector shield around the entire planet. They get stopped by basically the Earth Security Force Border Patrol. She gets angry because they broke protocol, blah, blah, blah. And they come up with some story that they're, they're generational shift and blah. It's like, really? Okay, fine. Um, if they were a generational ship, the ship would have been broken down, unfortunately. Um, usually, you can't just repair and replace everything on the ship. You would have damage. You'd have stuff broken uh, you wouldn't have nice clean uniforms <laughs> unfortunately uh, as I said they treat the fandom or the watchers as they're dumb I mean they would have like a uniform or attempt to have like uniforms but usually on a generational ship because you're passing down everything stuff's gonna get broken it's going to get torn. People are going to stop knowing how to fix something. You're not going to have a perfectly clean ship. Um, so. They start talking. The inspectors come on. 
they're searching your ship. One of these, I guess this is the not but one of the non-binary characters. Um, she's going to be the fourth know-it-all character. And I'm going to go over all the other know-it-all characters real quick. You have Stam Stamus. You have Burnham herself. You have Tilly. And now you have this character. I don't, I, you know what? I was so unimpressed and I just didn't want another know-it-all character. I didn't even remember the character's name. So, she's looking around in the Spore Drive uh, room and trying to figure out what it does. Um, five ships that are raiding that have been raiding Earth um, under a pirate leader appear and basically demand the dilithium on the Discovery. So. They start, uh, the inspectors argue that, uh, star or, um, Discovery set them up, blah, blah, blah. They can't beam off. Saru's like, no, no, let me handle this. Let me handle this. The inspector's like, no, I'm just going to, we're just going to open fire. Um, they find out that the jammer was set up by the non-binary character and it's like, Come on, uh, Stamos confronts her and then basically just spills the guts on what Discovery is. Um, so, there was a moment where Georgiou met Booker and they went over the things with um, Booker and Burnham. I like Giorgio. Um, I like snarky Giorgio. Um... I wanted the Section 31 show. I know it's probably not going to happen because they keep delaying it and delaying it and it's probably never going to get funded because of this. <laughs> um, and I just want her away from the rest of the Discovery crew, <laughs> really. Um, because it's a shame for that actress. It's a shame for Saru's actor to be tied down with all the rest of this. Um, so, they, Burnham comes up with a plan. She doesn't tell anybody except Booker, or Book, whatever his name is. And the captain, she just promoted herself. She was like, you're the captain. Decides to not even tell him, giving him plausible deniability. They steal all the dilithium, which they just showed you. The Discovery has, like... Enough to be, uh, basically form like three fleets. Uh, I don't know how many ships. But. And you just watch and they come up with. They're going over all these different plans that they did over the years. And you're like, whatever. I mean, because they're not showing it. So. And they, you know, have. It was like the. Uh, Black Widow and Hawkeye scene in Avengers Age of Ultron where they're like, oh, I remember Beirut differently. Basically, it's that scene. They So they go out. Booker's ship has a cloaking device, of course. Um, they start bartering with the pirates. They are complaining, uh, the inspectors get complaining, and the inspectors have their uh, weapon stations fire on Burnham ship. Saru puts the Discovery right in the way, uh, and it gets beat to hell, unfortunately. And, ugh. Somehow in this way, Burnham and Book capture the... Um, I guess beam off the captain, pirate captain, when he lowers his shield so they can send over the lithium. Whatever. They come back on board real quietly, not like you would think that the crew would announce, oh, book ship has redocked. Nope. He was like, uh, Saru's talking to the head inspector and suddenly Burnham walks in the door with the guy in the, uh, the head mask. 
So they go into what's basically the ready room, captain's forward, whatever it is. They start talking. So it's Giorgio, Burnham, Saru, the head inspector, the head pirate. Head pirates, like, I'm not going to talk to him. The uh, inspector's like, I'm not going to talk to him. Giorgio looks at him. Kicks the pirate down, rips off his mask, revealing him to be human. Wow, what a surprise. So, long story short, turns out he's from Titan. Titan, moon of Jupiter. Remember what I said about Burnham being able to detect discovery from halfway across the quadrant, or whatever sector she was in. Earth can't detect what's going on in Titan. Same system. Not sector. System. <laughs> Sorry. Same system. Like, two light years. Two light years away. Or AUs. Sorry. Astronomical units. Two light about two eight years away. Same system. They can't communicate with Titan. Same system. When you can have ships at one end of the system talk to other. Yeah, same. Saru basically gets them to both be like, oh, we're both. Terran. We're all Terrans. We're all from the Terran system. <sighs> they start talking. They decide to have some sort of trade with like the research that Titan did before everything went to crap, which should be the same level that Discovery had when they had their cover story where things weren't working. Things had stopped working. That solves that issue. New character decides, hey, I want to stay on board. Oh, I know what happened to the Admiral that sent the message 12 years ago. I'm rolling my eyes very hard at this. Turns out she's a human trill. And the Discovery crew has no idea what a trill is. They don't respect the fandom. They don't respect what's come before it. We had seven years learning about the Trills and that they were kind of an early member of the Federation, but they didn't do much because they were peaceful. They were, you know, they did things like science and, yeah. <sighs> Diplomacy and things like that. The Discovery crew has no idea what a trill is. Or that a human can carry a trill host. Okay. <sighs> Woosah. So. New character joins crew. We have a crew member from last season that haven't even gotten a lot of screen time. Um, that joined. Um, whatever happened to this being an anthology series, I don't know. But I'm going to have to be honest here. This is my first Crimes Against Humanity review. And there's no way I can rate it even higher than... I, I really don't even want to give it a zero. I want to go like negative 10 on my scale. I, f I, I, I mean, this, this, I'm speechless, really. I'm angry and speechless because it's 
stupid. <laughs> um, but yes, so I'm going to give it a five out of a hundred on the Fubble scale, which means it's a crime against humanity. Um, unfortunately, I actually, I mean, like I said, I actually enjoyed most of last episode except for Burnham saving the day again. And I just have a problem with that character. Um, like I said, when they first announced the Discovery, it was supposed to be more of an anthology series, but they let certain characters just take over. Um, yeah, that's where we're at. Uh, I, I lost all hope for this show after this episode. Um, oh, and the ending was basically all, a lot of the human crew going down and visiting Starfleet Headquarters Academy. That's not even being used in like a hundred years. But the tree's still there. Okay. Alright. Um, so we're going to end it there. Um, I cannot recommend this. <sighs> I took a serious hit for the team if you know what I mean on this one because this this was just horrible. And I don't know. I need something to clear my brain before I go to bed. And I had to do this review because I've never been this angry. And it's not anger for something happened in the show. It was how the show treated me <laughs> as a fan. <laughs> And that's where we're at with Discovery is the classic fans are being told they're stupid. So, here we go. Uh, tomorrow I'll probably do a review for Mandalorian, Episode 1, Season 2. Um, I still need to do some work on my unboxing for the Battletech Kickstarter. I wanted to actually do a good title card, but I'm just sending this one up because this is just bad. Um, Saturday I'll be playing something, probably, I want to try and finish up the G.I. Joe game, so that might be what we focus on. And my dinner's getting cold, so thank you, have a great day. If you haven't already, please hit the wonderful subscribe button, and good night.